do what's in front of us, then we do the next thing. Meg 2 has all the ingredients of a bad monster movie. Sequels about killer sharks haven't exactly had the best track record. This spans from the laughably bad Jaws the Revenge to the numerous Sharknado sequels that tried too hard to be so bad it's good they just ended up being so bad they're bad. But The Meg 2 also has a lot going for it as a sequel to the highly successful first film debuting in the summer of 2018. Can the sequel fare just as well? Well folks, throw on a life jacket and join us to see if Meg 2 can sink or swim. Go, go, go! I've never seen this before. They hunted it back. This may surprise some moviegoers, but the Meg movies are based on a series of books. The first film was adapted from the novel Meg, a novel of deep terror, and Meg 2 is based on the book sequel, The Trench. Author Steve Allen wrote both books. This isn't to say that the Meg is more high-minded just because it's drawing more from the books than other B-movies. It's interesting to consider, especially with how The Meg 2 reflects a similar inspiration. Director Ben Wheatley has taken over directing duties on the sequel, and he's a strong choice for a film like this. Wheatley has proven to be a director skilled in balancing the hilarious with the horrific. This includes his segment for the horror anthology, The ABCs of Death, and his absurd action comedy, Free Fire. So, making a giant shark movie would be a walk in the park for him, or a swim through the shallow end. The sequel brings back much of what made the first film so exciting for audiences. Jason Statham returns as Deep Sea Diver, Jonas Taylor. <laughs> Jonas Taylor, finding the perfect balance of grit and humor for this type of movie. He's back for more of the same. He teams up with scientists that have unearthed more deadly sea creatures flowing out of the Mariana Trench. This time, Taylor will not only have to outrun the Megalodon, but the smaller lizard creatures known as Snappers and the gigantic Kraken. You also get to see Statham beating up some humans before taking on the big creature from the murky depths. The film plays out as a series of theatrics and CGI-heavy kills. This includes the Megalodon munching more people and Statham engaging in ridiculous combat with the Sea Beast, complete with a kill involving a helicopter. There's not a whole lot to the plot as the film is mostly just a series of monster attacks. That level of popcorn entertainment seems to have pleased audiences since the film has already made $259.8 million at the box office. But The Meg 2 did not receive great reviews. In fact, they were lousy. Warner Brothers might have expected this response since the review embargo was set on a Thursday, one day before the film hit theaters. This is usually done to ensure audiences won't have much of an idea if the film is good or bad before they pre-order their tickets. But when the embargo dropped, the negative review sent the Rotten Tomatoes score plunging to 28%. What did the critics hate about this movie? Mile Yante of the Chicago Reader said that the film attempts to bite off its 2018 predecessor by going bigger in every way, but rarely for the better. Eddie Harrison of FilmAuthority.com said, We probably shouldn't be surprised that a franchise dedicated to the idea of shark jumping should jump the shark of credulity at the first possible opportunity. James Berard Nelly of Real View said, Hopefully the sequel will sink into the trench from whence it came and nothing else will surface in its wake. So, is the Meg 2 that bad? Compared to its contemporaries, it's one of the better shark movies. In addition to the many sequels of Jaws and Sharknado, there are way too many shark movies. There are also too many shark movies with the titular monster's full title of Megalodon. This includes Megalodon, Megalodon Rising, and Megalodon Great White Godfather. The creature also fought other monsters like Giant Octopus, Mega Shark, Crocosaurus, and even Bigfoot. All of these films were either TV movies or direct-to-video movies, so you could probably imagine how terrible they were. And if you can't, well, they were very bad. On a technical level, The Meg 2 is still a good-looking shark movie. Even when taking it out of the small bowl of shark movies with laughable visuals, the computer graphics are composited well for this type of picture. It's not completely seamless, but there's only so much realism that one can inject into a campy shark movie. The divide over the Meg 2 doesn't concern the plot. Most people would agree that these movies are goofy excuses for the most ridiculous of scenes where a Megalodon attacks. The question of whether or not the movie is bad depends on how willing the audience is to accept the silliness of the premise and appreciate the mindless action. But a film with a good premise has to be a good movie first. So, if you're going to have a shark movie with a campy tone, that level of fun has to be up there on the screen. 
Sadly, it's not as present with how the film is assembled. The story seems identical to the previous film and doesn't feature much exciting action until the third act. Don't you like that? Please! Wheatley's dark humor seems absent and Statham hardly has a moment to wink at the camera. This is a movie where Statham chucks harpoons at the Megalodon while riding a jet ski and it's not nearly as exciting or hilarious as it sounds on paper. Why is that? This type of tongue-in-cheek humor with Statham's ludicrous assaults may lean closer towards the B-movie appeal that usually favors absurd shark movies. But this isn't a DVD found at the bottom of the bargain bin or a movie of the week on the Sci-Fi Channel. No offense, Sci-Fi Channel. It's a theatrical action horror flick with a budget well over $120 million. That's a lot of money invested in a film that's trying to have fun with prehistoric creatures brutalizing humans. One would hope it wasn't intentionally trying to be bad in terms of effects and assembly. The biggest problem with The Meg 2 is that it can't replicate the silliness of other shark movies by its very design. Budgeted B-movies are more hilarious for their assembly. It's why Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus features the most hilarious scene of a shark attacking a plane. Holy! That's a level of comedy that you just can't get with a hundred million budget. For the record, that's the best part of Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus. The rest of the movie is very boring and cheap, but it's a slap together film from the asylum. With a film like The Meg 2 boasting a massive budget and a big name actor and a director who can balance horror and comedy, it's not as much fun as it could have been. Perhaps the biggest hindrance of a film like this is its limitations for becoming a summer blockbuster. Much like the previous film, The Meg 2 is rated PG-13. While it's still possible to have a fun horror movie with such a rating, a film like this just feels like it needs to be rated R. A ridiculous shark movie with lots of kills feels like it should have lots of blood and guts on display. Instead, the Megalodon seems to have the cleanest of meals when dining on humans. Calling the Meg 2 a bad movie may cause some moviegoers to get defensive and proclaim, what do you expect from a giant shark movie? Good question. Well, one would expect lots of violence with a shark terrorizing people at sea and Jason Statham to be having a ball with the silly material like the last movie. The same magic is not present here. It's a retread through familiar territory, hoping to catch lightning in a bottle by changing little. So the problem isn't that the Meg 2 is stupid, it's that it's not stupid enough. But this won't be the last time we see the Meg on the big screen. The film has already set up an idea for the next film and the big box office draw is sure to convince the studio to greenlight the Meg 3. Statham understands the appeal for a sequel, having stated after the first Meg movie, I think that it's like anything in this day and age. If it makes money, there's obviously an appetite to make more money. You're welcome. The next film already has a title as Steve Allen wrote a sequel book called Meg Primal Waters. And there you have it. Meg 2 The Trench is bad, but not because it's a mindless shark movie. If anything, it needs to be more of that. But whether it's a fun movie is ultimately up to the viewer. So. If you're in the mood for a silly summer monster movie that might not have a big bite, feel free to take a dive into this absurd movie. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time.